I want to thank IIED for bringing us together for this critically important discussion. The pandemic has undoubtedly laid bare so many of our vulnerabilities, but in these challenging times, there is nevertheless a green shoot of opportunity. An opportunity to build our societies back and to build them back greener and better. For too long now, governments and businesses have behaved as if we're somehow separate from the natural world that we inhabit, as if we exist in some kind of parallel universe. Well, COVID reminds us that we do not. It is itself very likely the consequence of our disrespectful and abusive relationship with the natural world. And we know that if we allow trends to continue, it will be dwarfed by others. Now, it should be self-evident that we cannot expect to cut tropical forests down at a rate of 30 football pitches per minute, or bring the world's great fisheries to the very brink of collapse, put two in every five of the world's plants and around a million species on a path to extinction without paying a terrible price. But that is nevertheless what we are doing. And despite all the fine words that we hear from world leaders year after year, the trends are not only not reversing, they continue to accelerate. So something profound needs now to happen. We need to match those words with action. And I want to acknowledge the huge progress that we are making in terms of carbon emissions reductions. Country after country is committing to bringing their emissions to net zero by 2050. The transition to a cleaner economy is happening and faster than really anyone predicted. Renewables are overtaking fossil fuels. A zero electric cars will soon become mainstream. Uh, millions and millions of people are employed in businesses around the world that are delivering that change. But we've made very little progress with nature. And its destruction is not only causing climate change, it threatens the world's poorest people who depend most directly on the free but criminally undervalued services that nature provides. A billion people depend on forests, and a similar number of people depend on fish for their main source of protein. So this in a world where the current pandemic is threatening to push an additional 100 million people into base poverty. So delivering a green recovery isn't merely a nice to have, it is a duty. And as incoming COP26 president, we're ramping up our efforts to protect and restore nature, and we're calling on others to do the same. While nature-based solutions could, we believe, provide at least a third of the most cost-effective solution to climate change, they currently receive less than 3% of the finance. So in addition to calling for ambitious nature and biodiversity targets in the run-up to the biodiversity and climate COPs, we're pressing also for significantly more finance for nature recovery. And recognising that public money alone won't be enough, we're working also to build a coalition of ambitious countries committed to identifying and deploying the levers that drive destruction of nature. The annual $700 billion, for example, that's dished up by governments to subsidize often highly destructive land use, but which, if shifted, could deliver exactly the kind of change that we so desperately need. We know the views and experiences of our least developed country partners are critical. They're on the front line, and while they contribute disproportionately so much less to climate change, many are nevertheless leading the way in tackling it. So we want to work with them, amplifying their voices, and doing all we can to deliver a year of meaningful action on a par with the scale of the challenges. Thank you so much.